Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Algerian President Abdel Majid Tabon on his country's Independence Day. His Majesty the King wished the President abundant health and happiness and further progress and prosperity to the people of Algeria. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Algeria, Abdel Majid Tabun, on the Independence Day of Algeria. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister sent a similar cable to the Prime Minister of Algeria, Ayman bin Abdul Rahman. The Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadabiya Palace. The cabinet noted the importance of the talks held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. It noted the agreements and MOUs signed between the two countries and the keenness of the two leaders to further enhance the bilateral brotherly relations and the strategic cooperation in all fields for the benefit of the two countries and their people. The cabinet then praised the inauguration of the new passenger terminal at Bahrain International Airport by His Majesty the King and the Egyptian President. It noted the importance of Bahrain International Airport and its various facilities in enhancing the position of the kingdom in the aviation sector and supporting various development paths, praising the efforts made by the people of Bahrain in supervising the implementation and operation of Bahrain International Airport, which made it one of the projects that achieved excellence at the regional and global levels. The cabinet then congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness on the advent of Eid al-Adha and wished the kingdom and its people as well as the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. The cabinet hailed the efforts of the team Bahrain in implementing the development and economic plans to achieve economic recovery and financial balance and added that these efforts earned international recognition. It affirmed the importance of continuing these efforts to achieve the aspired goals. After that, the cabinet followed up on the results achieved in terms of the availability of basic commodities through the measures that were taken to enhance the response to market needs in light of some global developments that affected energy supplies, freight shipping and the availability and prices of goods. The cabinet expressed its thanks to the Ministry of Industry and Commerce for its efforts in this regard, stressing the importance of continuing to monitor the prices of commodities and ensuring their availability in the markets to ensure the sustainability of the availability of basic commodities and the ability to meet market requirements in various seasons and conditions. Then the cabinet followed up on the unified framework of priority government programs that had been implemented in its third version. The cabinet directed the ministries to develop the executive plan for the remaining 29 projects within the unified framework of priority government programs that aim to achieve financial sustainability and secure a supportive environment for development. The Cabinet then approved the, follow the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on regulating linking the concerned authorities to the electronic system of commercial records. A memorandum by the Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture on the acquisition of a number of real estate for public benefit to provide the necessary spaces for urban development. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to six proposals and two law proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives as well as a law proposal submitted by the Shura Council. The Cabinet also reviewed the following topic. A memorandum by the Minister of Interior regarding the Ministry's priorities, plans and programs according to the Government Plan 2019-22. The Cabinet then took note of the ministerial reports on the award ceremony of the UNESCO King Ahmed Prize for the use of information and communication technology in education, the award ceremony of His Highness Sheikh Salim Al Ali Al Sabah Informatics Award, and the participation in the Preparatory Summit for the Education Transformation Summit, the 32nd meeting of the GCC Agricultural Cooperation Committee, and participation in the 11th round of the Urban Global Forum.
The President of the Supreme Council of Health, the SCH Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronized the graduation ceremony for doctors who completed these specialized training programs for the years 2020 to 21. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed affirmed that the national health system is keen on providing high quality comprehensive health care for citizens and residents in line with the goals of the development march. During his speech, the SCH President expressed pride in graduating a new batch of doctors in very medical specialities and that they were able to achieve in terms of excellence and distinction throughout their training. He also affirmed that Bahrain possesses qualified national caterers and is keen to invest in the human element to reach the desired development goals and highlighted the prominent role of Tim Keen in this regard. For her part, the Minister of Health Dr. Jalila bin Sal Sayed Jawad Hassan affirmed the priority of the health and safety of citizens, stressing to continue activating effective effective policies and strategies that revolve around preserving human health, enhancing the quality of life and the sustainability of the health system. She also noted the importance of empowering the human element to actively contribute to the progress and development. She also added the keenness to continue supporting national medical caterers and providing more training opportunities, especially in light of the global health developments. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Minister for Asia and the Middle East at the UK's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, the Lieutenant Honorary Amanda Melling, who is currently visiting the Kingdom. The Minister lauded the efforts of the UK Minister, which contributed to the success of the 14th meeting of the Bahraini British Ministerial Working Group held in London last month. He also expressed the Kingdom's appreciation of the UK announcement of its intention to launch the new electronic travel permit system as of the beginning of next year. Dr. Zayani praised the friendly cooperation between the GCC and the UK, noting the recent joint statement on the launch of the free trade agreement negotiations between the GCC and the UK, which reflects their mutual keenness to further enhance strategic partnership and the interests of both sides. For her part, Milling praised the close relations between the two friendly countries and people, highlighting their cooperation at various levels. The two sides Sides discussed the long standing relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom, in addition to regional and international developments and issues of common concern. During a press conference announcing the updated work plan of the Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Development Council, the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Zayda Zayani, and Chairman of the SME Development Council, affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain pays great importance to the SME sector by consolidating its pillars through the issuance of stimulating legislation and laws and the development of infrastructure to provide an economic environment that attracts investments and create more quality opportunities for citizens. Citizens. And to speak more about that, we have with us on the phone the Director of SME's Development, Ms. Sheikh Abdel Al Fadl. Hello, Ms. Sheikh, it's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the aim to increase the small and medium sized enterprises in the national GDP and how can that be achieved? Hello, thanks for having me today. Um, yesterday, the SME Development Board uh, launched its new strategic plan 2022 2026. In support of SMEs as part of its overall um, economic recovery plan. Uh, since the micro, small, and medium enterprises are considered an important pillar of economic development along with our local entrepreneurs and startups that are considered uh, the backbone of any economy. As this sector has a clear impact on reducing unemployment rates, providing job opportunities, raising exports, and diversifying the tributaries of the national economy. Therefore, under the guidance of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince, Prime Minister, and the Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the SME Development Board was formed in 2017 to develop this sector. The board includes in its membership uh, OMIC, Ministry of Youth, the Economic Development Board, uh, Labour Fund, Tanki, and Bahrain Development Bank, and recently the Tinder Board was added as a permanent member. Uh, the board aims to strengthen the capabilities of these enterprises uh, to improve their competitiveness in the local and the global market. It also increase, uh, aims to increase um, the contribution of SMEs to growth domestic products, exporting, and local labor employment. 
Uh, therefore, to consolidate the pillars of this sector through issuing stimulating legislation and laws to develop infrastructure that will create an economic environment that is attractive to startups and SMEs. Therefore, the board in its first plan uh, that was launched in 2018, 2022, the plan has completed and implemented 16 initiatives, such as Export Bahrain uh, that has succeeded facilitating a total value of exports equivalent to 184 million US dollars, in addition to implementing the cabinet decision for allocating 20% of government procurement to SMEs. Since implementing this program uh, in December 2019, the total value of tenders that were, that were allocated uh, to the SME uh, are equivalent to around 111 million Bahraini dinars. Uh, in addition to launching incubator, the incubator activity, today Bahrain has over 28 licensed incubators uh, with around uh, 1,000 startups incub as incubating within this, those um, incubators and accelerators. In addition to the SME's registration system, which is uh, the first of its kind in the Kingdom of Bahrain, since launching it in, uh, the, in 2019, today we have over 3,800 applications received. The new plan continues those efforts to create qualitative opportunities um, as the launch of the second phase of the work plan came to create promising economic opportunities with an additional 27 initiatives under five pillars, access to finance, access to market, fostering innovation, skills development, and simplifying the business procedures. Those are really some great efforts, and we thank you very much for that. Director of SME's Development, Ms. Sheikh Abdullah Al-Fadl, thank you very much for joining us. The CEO of the National Space Science Authority, Dr. Mohamed Ibrahim Al Asiri, revealed that the NSSA has finished preparing the draft of the National Space Law, which will be the first Bahraini law concerned with regulating the space sector at the national level, as it is currently under review before taking all necessary constitutional procedures for its issuance and ratification. And to speak more about this, we have with us on the phone the technical advisor to NSSA, Dr. Mohamed Al. Hello, Dr. Mohammed. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the new space draft law and what it aims to achieve? Yes. Uh, hello. It's nice to be with you. Uh, the draft to the national space law, now it's in final stages, consists of 51 articles in nine chapters. And it is aligned with the laws of Bahrain and the international space treaties adopted by the United Nations. Uh, with this law, Bahrain will be one of the few countries in the world with a complete, comprehensive national space law rather than what is being used uh, in, in the other countries, which are various decrees and laws regulating different aspects of the space sector. Uh, one of the aims of this space law, which regulates space activities and space-related activities, is to attract investment in the rapidly growing new sector. Uh, as we see within the last 10 or so years, uh, many startup companies in the, uh, in the field, and thus it is essential to define the obligation and rights of every entity in the sector, whether it is small or a large company. The, uh, we need that to sustain the growth of the sector. In addition, it, divide, it defines the role of NSSA in terms of licensing, monitoring, and inspection. Mm -hmm. And the Kingdom of Bahrain is making large strides in the development of national space science. Can you tell us more about the plans to integrate them in education? Yes, uh, this is one of the goals of the NSSA as stated in the Royal Decree uh, establishing the agency. Uh, we have a strong collaboration with the Ministry of Education and the Higher Education Council. And we have conducted several uh, workshops and uh, meetings that would uh, introduce the uh, space and the space uh, technologies in the curriculum of whether it's the uh, schools or the universities. Uh, some of these initiatives included a co a code in space, experiment in space, experiment on the moon. And in addition, we facilitate between the universities and other space agencies offering opportunities for developing different components or software for the satellite. Uh, 
Uh, one of these uh, activities also is the, the space camp that we did in, back in 2021 and the upcoming one in 2023, where a number of uh, students, high school students from Bahrain, would uh, participate in space camp in the U.S. That is indeed very good to hear. Technical advisor to NSSA, Dr. Mohamed Lathman, thank you very much for joining us.